our listener and friend, Danielle. So we get to the concert in New York, Never all excited. <laughs> we mainly wanted to see CKY. Sure. We were like, all right, you know what? We get to see Guar. That's awesome. But we were there to see CKY. So we're standing in line. They're about to open the doors. Just as they get ready to open the doors, the concert people in charge or whatever come out to let the audience know that CKY just broke up. <laughs> and we're sitting and a couple people decided to leave from the live. Can but we're you finish like, the show first? Back here. Um, Jay mentioned uh, Moni Moni. Which one is better? And I'm just going to say, oh, yeah, Billy Idol. <laughs> Billy Idols <laughs> by a mile Billy and a half. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, so do you also know the Tool song Third Eye? Yes. Okay, the guy talking at the beginning of that out that track about take all your tapes and albums and burn them because the guys who wrote all that song really high on drugs. That's Bill. No shit. And this is Bill Hicks in their liner notes. Oh. Yes. See, I still have the album upstairs. Yes, so now that's, I feel like, oh. that is Bill Hicks, another dead hero. I wish I knew, cause I met Maynard, mm -hmm. believe it or not. Me and my girlfriend. Yes, my girlfriend and I, we went to a Tool concert in 02 or 01. And mysteriously, somehow, I don't know, uh, one of the people gave mm. us backstage passes. And we're like, all right, this is weird. But no, it was legit. It was backstage passes. There's like a bunch of group of people that ended up going backstage to meet the band Tool. And my girlfriend, she was a huge Tool fan. Like, if Maynard said, hey, can you lick my feet? She would have been, like, front and center for yeah. it. <laughs> you know? But, like, he was such a weird dude. You know? Yes, he's and very she's... He's not on plan. He's yeah. on another plane of existence than I know. the rest of us. And, like, I knew some things about him beyond Tool. She's like, I just want him to talk to me. So I, I whisper in her ear. I'm like, mention Edgar Casey." Mm -hmm. She's like okay so he said something and she was like wow that's like some kind of edgar casey type shit and he looked at her and went you what's your name <laughs> and she should've like you... almost died and i'm sitting here like you should have mentioned bill actually speaking of death zones they did a cover of uh sade's no ordinary love they brought that to, like like i said it's that level where everyone just takes these pop songs at this one point in time in like 2000s where they just made it you know what? We're just going to make an album of songs you can fuck to. <laughs> it, that's basically what it is. Yeah. Like, you know how, like, you know, people talk about 90s R&B as baby making music? Yeah. That's what, like, this happened. This cheek banging music. Yeah, th th this is what happened in, like, between 2003 to 2007. Like, these these hardcore bands, you know, new metal bands and emo surreal bands took these R&B rap songs and they're, like, we're going to make it stripper-esque, like, fuckable, hot. And it's like, what are you doing? And they're good. It's like a guilty pleasure, like, looking for those songs. Everybody and their mother is covered true fucking color today because I'm like, nervous. Yeah, but his is the best. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe it's the best. All right. What the hell? Fire alarm? Oh, okay. No, it's, no, that's the little ding-a-ling thing. ding a <laughs> I'm so mature. It's a little ding-a-ling chimey thing that Damien put up by the door of the basement. Um, because whenever he would be down here, people would sneak up on him and he'd get scared. And I thought it just went off for no reason thinking it was a ghost. It's my mom. <laughs> Little dingling thing. Little dingling LP. Which oh, I, have you ever heard the rumor that Disarm was actually written about Courtney? Oh, it was, that about, was, a, it was it, about her his father though. Well, the big '90s rumor was you know Courtney was a doorknob to a lot of the bands, and that <laughs> and that, <laughs> oh yeah, oh, Courtney yeah. Courtney Love was like big. All the 90s rumors were that she was the doorknob. You know, there was Cobain, uh, you know, Gavin Rosdale, Billy Corrigan. I just want to point out the lady said that, not the, the white guy. Yes. Supposedly, I put the gunship. I put the gunship. 
Okay. Uh, I put Gunship on that because right now they are, I, I would personally say, one of the four front runners. What? What is a four front runner? Okay, now I'm the derpy one. Um, I'm yeah. still kind of breaking on that one. <laughs> Gunship. Sunday, read the Bible three times, went through communion, all that stuff. So it was like, I still had my hardcore connection to religion, but. For some reason, that made it fantasy. You know what part of the movie the extra scared me? God. The spinal tap. I don't they, remember it. Don't describe it. Yeah, well, I'm not. But they just gave, they give Reagan a spinal tap. And I, that's the part, to this day, I'm 37, I'm like, hey. Nope. Yeah. It, it, like, I'm traumatized. Because William freaking has to get all that detail. Mm -hmm. That's true. But when you're open about it, can it really be used against you? No, because we all know that, A, he's a terrible husband, and B, he really likes lingerie, which, who does it for about five minutes till it gets itchy, then you take it off and bang anyway. Yeah, fuck it. Any whore. Uh, but, any whore? <laughs> Ouch. It, was appropriate. Ouch. it was so appropriate to Ow. say that. It was very appropriate. You know my nerve damage, you jerk. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of Manic Mixtape. I am Foxy Foxy and next to me, <laughs> sort of, next to me on the screen, either that way or this when way. I turn, when I turn, I'm looking at you. Yeah, here. It, it's like the Brady Bunch thing. Is the lovely man who makes all of this happen, and without him, this whole show would not be possible. Nor any other shows on his Twitch channel. Right. Dan Kalachi. Don't you forget it. I'm no longer the above average comedian. I'm the other guy. You're my other guy. You and you know, and you know. Oh, yeah. I'll take. I mean, I'll take it. I'll take second. So I always knock and I'm just. So it wasn't about me being polite. Also, although I was taught to knock on a fucking door when you go over anybody's house. Even no, They still tell me, you don't have to knock. I'm like, I'm knocking when I come over. But, knock on the door, hello, how you doing? Hey, can you put on Woodstock? I just want to see I don't want to watch it live, I just want to see The moment she turns on Woodstock 99 bass, uh, Flea takes the bass off his fucking off to the side and all you see is swinging dong. S butt ass naked! Yeah. Butt ass yeah. naked! I said, no, it won't be long. Just big old dick swinging. And I'm like, thanks, Flea. That's great. I appreciate yeah. that. That's what happens when you steal cable, kids. Making it thinking it's fake. You're an idiot. By the way, COVID's a thing. Everything got pushed back, as we know. And they both got pushed back to November 2021. The Ghostbusters one got pushed back like three times before they're like, November. That's it. We're doing it November. And it was going to be the week before. Or, or is it going to be the week after? It might have been Thanksgiving week, but since another movie got pushed back to the following year, Sony was like, we'll take those screens. We're going to release it a week earlier than we said. Which happened to be the same day that Genesis was in Washington, D.C. <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> For you to make me pick these two things on this particular day.